Now, I remember a day when we couldn't get uh, 10 people together to talk about statehood, even if we provided lunch. So uh, this is amazing that you guys will all come out. And we need to remember we've got some serious business to do here. Uh, this is a crazy anachronism, political anachronism, that the people of the District of Columbia are totally unrepresented in both houses of Congress. And that doesn't even uh, address the fact that we also don't have control over our own budget or our own legal system. This has to change. This cannot stand in America. Last night, we heard the First Lady say the next four or eight years, what we're really talking about in America is how we're going to raise our children. Well, let me tell you, this is what we're talking about when it comes to statehood. The people of the District of Columbia need to decide to stand up and, and be part of their own future. It's crazy that we don't have uh, uh, representation in both houses. And now's the time to change it. We have the President of the United States saying I'm for it. We have a presidential candidate who says, who, by the way, will be the first woman president of the United States. <laughs> I will fight for it. We have Senator Sanders was one of the first co-sponsors of our statehood legislation. So the Democrats all agree and they stand behind this. We're getting momentum, which you can see, and now is the time for us to move. So thank you for coming today. We hope that you will wear your 51 buttons, that you will talk up statehood that will make the people of, of, of America understand that after 215 years, 32 Congressional Medal of Honor recipients, uh, billions and billions of dollars in federal taxes, that we deserve to be equal citizens. So now is the time for us to move, and thanks for coming. Uh, we hope you have a good time, and uh, we're available to answer questions, give you materials, to pass out whatever you want. And let me introduce my colleague, uh, Franklin Garcia, who's our representative, who's worked hard on the Hill to get the 150-plus co-sponsors that we now have that are co-sponsors of our statehood legislation. Franklin. Thank you, Senator Spouse, for finding ways in which we can promote statehood and bring about the word of statehood. Um, you know, it's amazing that uh, we have to fight for equality in the nation's capital. Um, I am particularly excited to be here so I can take the message to uh, the Latino members of Congress because currently uh, we have about 30 members of the U.S. In the, in the lower house and we have about only uh, 13 members who are supporting statehood. And I think it's all about uh, knowledge and knowing what we're talking about. I think a lot of the progressive uh, Democrats um, that would support this cause don't really know what this is, and that's what I'm doing. I'm trying to get the word out and make sure that people know about it. want to um, just say thank you so much for all the work that all these advocates are doing there for statehood to make our life easier. I uh, want to recognize the intern we have who's going to start off uh, Penn State uh, for statehood, uh, Matt, right there. Give him a hand for that talk. So just very excited to be here and continue to do whatever I can to make sure that people understand that we need to be equal in the nation's capital. Thank you very much. I'm sorry, folks, I forgot to say one thing. Senator Strauss put this luncheon together. Yeah. Uh, so Thank you very much. Uh, now I'd like to introduce the chairman of our council, but uh, I like to call him the speaker of our House of Delegates, which is what we hope uh, we will be soon when we become a state. He also happens to be the co-chair of the New Columbia Statehood Commission and was in fact the sponsor of the legislation that created the New Columbia Statehood Commission, uh, the Honorable Phil Mendelson. Thank you, Senator Thank you all for being here. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. 
Um, it's a real pleasure to be here, and more importantly, it's a pleasure to see some folks that are some faces that I haven't seen before. And I say that because too often our debate or discussion about voting rights and statehood in the District of Columbia is a conversation that we have with ourselves. And as a few of us have said over and over again, and I'm hearing from others this week, is that we need to take this discussion, this debate nationwide. That's where it's going to change, is by our taking it nationwide. So this, this kind of convention is an opportunity to highlight and to bring to a broader national attention the issue. You know, one of the problems that we have is that folks across the country don't understand what the situation is in terms of a vote, in terms of citizenship, that's it, citizenship in the District of Columbia. From time to time, somebody will do a poll. And the question is, do you support the citizens of the District of Columbia having voting rights, representation in Congress, and so forth? And overwhelmingly, citizens across the country say yes. Uh, you talk to them individually, and you hear things like, well, but you already have the vote. Well, we don't. Um, or that, uh, well, why should there some folks my mother was one of them used to say that uh, well, if you're, all your money comes from the federal government. Well, it doesn't. Um, and so we, we just need to expand this discussion. And uh, I see this as a great opportunity. Again, thank you all for being here. Let me call up for some remarks our uh, chairman pro tem of the DC Council, the council member from Ward 2, the Honorable Jack Evans. Good afternoon, everyone. Good afternoon. You know, isn't this a great convention so far? Yes. Yeah. How about Michelle Obama last night? Yeah. So I've been around for a while. I have some insights. I think she might have a political career. What do you think? I mean, really, she's looking terrific. Well, this is a great convention for us because after two times where they skipped us, we are back. The District of Columbia statehood is back in the Democratic Party platform. Now we're back again. And uh, we have a candidate, Hillary Clinton, who has said publicly, who has written publicly, she supports statehood for the District of Columbia. So we're very excited about this opportunity. And we have called for it. Hopefully, the message is getting out in her acceptance speech on Thursday night that she mentions. D.C. statehood. So hopefully that will come out. I don't know if it will, but it great that she did mention it. I want to take this opportunity to thank our, our uh, two senators and representatives. Give them a round of applause. And I want to recognize uh, our mayor and our chairman and uh, the two senators and representatives. They put together a, uh, this commission and what our mayor did is to elevate the issue of statehood very recently. It has been elevated, then it kind of drives off, and then it's been elevated, and Mayor Bowser made a decision, and she was going to really make statehood a big issue. And she got together with the other elected officials, and her idea, which is a great idea, is this Tennessee plan is to be ready. So when Hillary Clinton takes office, as, on January 22nd, as the next president of the United States, the first desk, the first thing on her desk is going to be a plan for statehood for the District of Columbia. I think Hillary's going to do so well that we're going to capture the Senate and maybe even capture the House of Representatives. And that's what we need to make statehood a reality. And so the big issue for all of us in this room, though, is to get Hillary elected and to get the two houses of Congress. And what we need to do is energize the country. I think the biggest issue we have are people, sometimes they just stay home. And we have to energize people to come out. The election is too important. Anyone who watched the Republican convention last week realizes how important this election is for our country, right? So we really, we really have to get energized, get out there, win this election, and get Hillary elected. She and her husband, Bill Clinton, I, re I told this story last night, I remember meeting with Bill Clinton in 1992 when he was running for president. 
running into primaries in the Wilson Building in the District of Columbia. He sat down with a couple of us on the council and said at that time that he supported statehood for the District of Columbia, and he always did. The timing never kind of worked out for us then, but the Clintons have always been great friends of the District of Columbia. And so we are very excited to have this opportunity to have them back and to have Hillary leading us going forward. And I have to say one other thing. As a father of two daughters, I can't tell you how important it is to elect a woman as president of the United States. another thing to make it a reality. And so, for all those reasons, let's get out there and let's make it happen. Thank you all so much. I'd like to invite up Council Member Brianne Nadeau, one of our delegates here. Thank you, Senator. Thank you all for joining us here today to have this very important discussion about statehood. There are two groups of people that I talk to a lot about statehood. One is other elected officials, and uh, those conversations are usually me explaining how important it is that our local government is treated like any other state. Um, when I tell them about the way Congress treats us, the way Congress imposes its will on our people, they are appalled because they know what true autonomy is like, and as other elected officials, they understand how egregious it would be if their laws were overturned. And so that is an easy conversation to have. The other very easy conversation to have, you will not be surprised, is with children. I do a lot of talking with children, and I always ask them the question, do you believe it is right for some people in our country to have more rights than other people? And what do you think they say to me? That's right. It's a very easy answer. Because when you put it down to the most simplest question, even our children understand that not having rights in the District of Columbia to vote in Congress, to manage our own finances, and to be truly autonomous is a civil rights issue. Thank you. that the DC delegation is here talking to everyone that we can about statehood because the moment is now. And sometimes when we are talking about statehood, people say, well, do you really think it's gonna happen? And I always say yes, because we cannot afford for it not to happen. We have waited too long. Our people have done everything to be treated equally. And we are going to make that happen together, and we are going to make that happen by talking to everyone at this convention until nobody who's here can possibly leave without understanding what's happening in the District of Columbia. We're going to get this done. So I want to thank my colleagues. I want to thank the, the um, State of Delegation for putting this together. And I just want to add, as a young woman in office, and I know our mayor feels the same way, how inspiring it is to have the first woman being nominated here today, to be a delegate. This is something I have dreamed of since I was a little girl, and it is something that little girls will now not have to think of as a dream because they will see it happening before their eyes. So I thank you, and this is gonna be a wonderful lunch, and thanks for being here. by the council member from Ward 5, the Honorable Vincent Arch. I'm sorry, I'm Arch, Arch. Um, He's from Ward 5. <laughs> well, thank you, Paul. I, I used to represent Ward 5 for eight years, and now I represent the entire city, and it is really indeed an honor. And Paul, he said, no, he and I, we share the same birthday. We both, uh, April 11th babies, uh, so we'll forgive him for that, that slight. It wasn't inaccurate because I'm from World Five. But you know, it's, it's good to be here in, in the city of brotherly love, and I would say brotherly love and sisterly love. And it's great to look out here and see what America really looks like. Yes. It looks like this in this room here. And uh, I think we all took a great start last night, everything we're moving forward. 
and I'm just happy to, to be here with my daughter. She's 20, so she can share in all this. And really, you know, my message here today is really the message that I've been saying for a very, very long time. And that is, we want to give every child in America the opportunity to have the same dream as everyone else as everyone else. And it shouldn't be because you live in the District of Columbia and you're a young person, you cannot dream of being a senator. And you're watching, uh, you know, former Senator Hillary Clinton about to become the first woman president of the United States of America. And you want to exactly what you thought of her past. You know, it's not right for our, our young men and our young women not to be able to be in the District of Columbia simply because of their address and cannot dream of being a member of the House of Representatives with a full vote. And so it's great to be here at a time like this where we continue to make history. We made history with President Obama. Now we're going to make uh, history with Hillary Clinton. But I still got to tell you, you know, I'm a mom's boy. I have seven sisters and two brothers. And I still have to tell you, the ladies are great. And Michelle Obama knocked it all of us. And I just want to end by saying uh, to our shadow of delegation, you're not a shadow to me. No. You've been working extremely hard. Uh, let's give it up for Senator Strauss, <laughs> Senator Brown, and our representative Garcia, and everybody else. But let's keep this out of the court. And I can tell you, the people back in D.C. are calling, wow, wow, I want to be at that lunch. And Strauss then pulled it off again. <laughs> Great. I'm their representative. I'm here for you. God bless you all. Let's get this done. Thank you so much. Now, we do have some uh, pretty high power and high wattage celebrity bold face names coming, and I know that they're going to be here soon. But we have our own high wattage celebrity bold face name right in the house here. Uh, today, we call her our mayor. But I look forward to the day very, very soon when I can call this brilliant woman our governor.
Sadly, one thing has D.C. residents do not have equal rights. That's why I support statehood. Call your senator and tell him to support D.C. statehood. Call. <laughs> Every American has the right to be represented in Congress and in their own communities. But if you live in Washington, D.C., you're denied those rights. Because the citizens of D.C. have no vote in Congress, and that's just wrong. Which is why I support statehood for the District of Columbia. If you believe D.C. deserves equality, call your senator and tell him to support D.C. statehood. It's the right thing to do. Every American has the right to be represented in Congress and in their own communities. But if you live in Washington, D.C., you're denied those rights. Because the citizens of D.C. have no vote in Congress, and that's just wrong. Reality. And that's wrong. Every American citizen deserves equal rights. 
DC residents serve in the military, pay full federal taxes, and serve our country in so many ways. And that's why I support statehood for the District of Columbia. If you believe every American should have equal rights, tell your senator to support DC statehood. Do it. I am Evan Handler, and I'm a resident of the state of California. As such, I get to. Well, you get a sense of uh, what we're trying to do, and with. Uh, Before we bring in our celebrities, which I think will be happening very soon, we are joined by, uh, we are here in the great Commonwealth of Pennsylvania, uh, and we have one of Pennsylvania's great uh, elected officials. If you're staying with us in the D.C. delegation, you are in Montgomery County, Pennsylvania. And we are honored to have the chairman of the Montgomery County Commission, uh, with us right now to welcome us on behalf of the people of Pennsylvania, Josh Shapiro, soon to be the next Attorney General for the Commonwealth of Pennsylvania. Well, good afternoon, everyone. Good afternoon. My name is Josh Shapiro, and I realize I am standing in between you and a whole bunch of celebrities, of which I am not one. So I will be very brief. I really came here to make two points. Number one, I wanted to just simply welcome you to the city of brotherly love and sisterly affection of the great Commonwealth of Pennsylvania. And for those of you staying at the Hilton Garden Inn in Fort Washington, let me welcome you to Montgomery County, Pennsylvania's third largest county. And uh, we are so pleased to have you. When Paul told me, when Senator Strauss told me you'd be staying with us, uh, I was really, really pleased to have you. So that was the first one. The second thing I wanted to say is just how important, and I know I'm preaching the choir here, just how important these voting rights are, not just to you in D.C., but to all of us across the United States of America. You know, we had a battle with something a few years ago when our then Republican government said that everyone in Pennsylvania, in order to vote, needed to show up with an ID. These voter ID laws that some across the country are pushing and promoting. And it's not to try and enhance people's right to vote. It's trying to make it harder for certain people to vote. And in Pennsylvania, and Montgomery County in particular, we rallied back against that. We found a little loophole in the law in Pennsylvania that said that a nursing home could actually issue identification cards to help people be able to go out and vote. Did you know what we did in my county, in the third largest county in Pennsylvania? We created a mobile nursing home, and we drove all around Montgomery County, issuing these ID cards, giving people the opportunity to vote. I saw firsthand in the Commonwealth of Pennsylvania how under threat this right was. And so I have to tell you something. This is not just your battle. This is our battle. This is America's battle to make sure that more than 600,000 Americans get the opportunity to have their voice heard, get the opportunity to make sure that they are counted equally. And so as the chairman of the third largest county in Pennsylvania, and hopefully, God willing, the next attorney general from the Commonwealth of Pennsylvania, I want you to know that I stand shoulder to shoulder with you in this fight. I welcome you uh, to this great Commonwealth of ours, and I look forward to being in this battle together with you. Thank you all very, very much. Let me introduce Bo Shuff from DC Vote, one of our sponsors of uh, today's event. DC Vote is one of the preeminent uh, civil rights, voting rights, and DC statehood advocacy organizations here in the District of Columbia. Uh, thank you for your support of this event. Bo. <laughs> uh, I, first of all, thank you everybody uh, for coming out for this event. Uh, DC Vote is, is the long time, long standing organization working for full equality for DC residents. Uh, we're excited to beginning a, be beginning a new chapter uh, in, in advocacy and outreach uh, and really putting together a plan to deliver full equality for the, for the District of Columbia. Um, I, I was listening to some of the speakers earlier. And there's a lot of conversation about uh, voting rights and budget rights and all of 
very technical, very legal, very wonky, for lack of a better word, uh, comparisons to, to or reasons that we need to move forward on DC equality. Uh, it, for me, it's very simple. Uh, it just is the right thing to do. And that's the argument that I think that we need to make as we go across the country, uh, as we start to talk to delegates here and in Cleveland and every other place that people gather, is that DC equality is just the right thing to do. It is time for the residents of the district to be treated the same way as everyone else in this country for all of the reasons we know to be true. Uh, so please, as you all are leaving, uh, I'm an organizer at heart. I believe in talking with everybody that we've come into contact with. We left some tools for that on your tables. Take all of that stuff with you. Uh, if I leave with an empty box, I'll be very happy because it means that you all have taken all of the stickers and the hats and the pens and the pins and everything else. Take it with you. Get it out to the world. Uh, get it out to the rest of the country so that everybody else sees it. Um, and, and we can move forward together on equality. I am vamping for time in case anybody's wondering. <laughs> uh, Senator? I did happen to notice, however, that uh, our delegate, uh, Eleanor Holmes Norton, has joined us. Uh, so we should at least go around this house. And maybe she wants to help me adapt the time a little bit and join us and say something about uh, our efforts. Stay. Where's Stay there? Maybe? Please. <laughs>
who've never organized anything, I think we, they have something to teach us so that we can teach the country what it does not know. So if, if this is a declaration that we are all now part of this movement, then this terrific luncheon shall have been worth it for no other reason than that, even if we didn't eat a thing. Because <laughs> we're eating and drinking off a lot of statehood and thinking of ways to make, to make statehood second nature first to us and then so much to the country that when it comes time, sooner rather than later, the country will understand you have no alternative but to bring 700,000 into your country by making the District of Columbia the 51st state of the United States. Thank you for coming. Thank you so much, Dr. Schumann. I know we're all gonna be looking forward to your remarks tomorrow night. We're gonna be in the hall cheering you on. And um, everybody says, you know, as a, a non-voting center from DC, what kind of privileges do you have? Well, let me just tell you, uh, being able to serve with Congresswoman Eleanor Holmes North is probably one of the best privileges uh, anybody could ever have. Michelle Obama, the, a woman so fantastic that her words are actually uh, read and spoken at two. We saw our party come together uh, and we had a, a real privilege of uh, being joined here by some very, very special guests. Um, and I don't think it was a coincidence that as we were sitting in the hall, and you know, one of the disadvantages of being from the District of Columbia is that we're not known for getting great seats. Uh, you look, you know, you got Iowa, they're right up front, and Virginia, and some of those battleground states. But uh, we, uh, we were way there in the back. Behind the Virgin Islands, behind the wall. <laughs> But, but behind us, and I don't know that it was, uh, maybe it was a coincidence, or maybe it was just uh, one of those messages that uh, come from the universe. Uh, we're sitting, some of the members of the Creative Coalition, right there in the suite behind us. And uh, it, it was really just a wonderful moment. For example, uh, Ashley Dudd uh, has just joined us. And I, uh, funny story, we're like, uh, as you know, it gets kind of hot up there. So I, I'm like motioning to Ashley, uh, half kidding, but like, do me a favor, hey, can you send down some, uh, some waters or something? So Ashley Dudd throws me two waters. Uh, <laughs> And, uh, and she says to me, wow, now i got a, a good story. And I'm thinking to myself, well, she's got a good story. <laughs> I just uh, had water tossed to me by uh, well, maybe the next senator from the great state of Kentucky. <laughs> <laughs> but what I think it really said to me is that literally and figuratively, the Creative Coalition had DC's back. And one of the things, yeah, I think that's true. <laughs> one of the things that I love in working with this group is that they advocate for so many wonderful causes. Arts education, fighting obesity in America. Uh, yesterday they were talking about enhancing the safety of over-the-counter drugs. Uh, so many wonderful issues. And they're issues that we get to discuss in Congress, but if you're from the District of Columbia, 
you don't get to meaningfully participate in that discussion. Because the people who can vote for Congresswoman North, the people who can vote, people get to vote for me, they get to vote for Senator Brown, but none of us get to cast a vote on the floor of the Congress of the United States. Now tonight, very, very rarely, I would, I'm going to get to do something that I don't get to do a lot. I'm going to get to vote on a floor for the people who were elected, who sent me to do that. And I am very excited. One, because, you know, I don't get to vote very often, so I'm all geared up for that. But two, that we're going to nominate the first woman president is something very, very special. Uh, I brought my daughter, Abigail, here with me. Uh, I had asked her if she wanted to give a speech and introduce me, but she felt that that was too Trump-like. <laughs> We're going, to take, uh, we're going to take that back one day. But in the meantime, let me thank uh, the members of the Creative Coalition for being here. Let me introduce Robin Bronk, their executive director, who's going to tell us some of the wonderful people we have in the room. Not that they need any introduction, because uh, you all know who they are. But let's welcome and thank them. It's really exciting to be here. I said I uh, run the Creative Coalition with the help of some of my friends and we're so happy to be here to get voting rights for the 51st state of Hollywood. <laughs> <laughs> Statehood for Hollywood. No, I, we are, when, when the Senator first told us about this issue a couple years ago, he, you know, usually we're, as the Creative Coalition, we're the nonprofit, nonpartisan arm of the entertainment industry for the sole reason of uh, taking on issues to put the power of entertainment and arts behind those issues because we know that arts is what moves the needle. And when the senator came to us, he, could, he wasn't even able to finish his sentence. We said, yes, we're on it. And it's our pleasure and our honor to be part of this movement for 51st state for DC. And I also wanted to bring up, well, I'll bring up our whole gang, but Reed Scott from Thank you. 
you. So we're, we're ready to start voting. We're ready to have the vote turned over to you. Let's get some sense in this country. Thank you. Thank you all so much for uh, being here. You really, really honor us with your presence. And, um, you know, the reality is, is that with uh, your celebrity, your star power, you can reach people that, uh, that we often get. So thank you. Thanks to everyone for coming out today. This was a great event. Uh, and let's go make some history tonight. Thank you. Yeah, we got a lot of